Kathy and Sia, and in this episode, we will be talking about setting intentions that help you align with your future direction. So let's do this. Absolutely. So it's the end of the year. Although actually, I really think this can be used to set intentions at any time of the year. But I just think it's got a real punch to it, hasn't it? Yeah. At the end of the year. Um, so what we wanted to have a bit of a chat about today was the difference between resolutions and intentions. Which I think is great because, so I'll tell you for one, so my husband doesn't believe in setting resolutions. In fact, we always go through this crazy ritual where every year I say to him, what New Year's resolutions are you going to set? And he says, to not set any. Every year, like for perhaps the last 10 years, we've done that. And yet he's still alive, people. So it's... Cheryl's New Year's resolution not to kill him has clearly been going down well. Yeah, maybe I should set a resolution to not ask him. There we go, that's yours. So, okay, so why doesn't he like resolutions? What's his thoughts on it? I think he just feels that they're a waste of time, that you end up setting things that you never stick to. So yeah. maybe it's just like, why bother? Well, I, it was something that we talked about in our previous podcast um, as well, so please do check that out if you haven't already, where we talked about how resolutions can often be around a long list of things that you need to stop. Yeah. Rather yeah. than things that you want to add to your life so yeah. it can be i will stop eating chocolate i will be sober yeah. i will get up every morning yeah. and go to the gym it's kind of like another way of beating yourself up isn't yeah. it basically another list of another list of chores right yeah. and another list of things to fail at <laughs> <laughs> merry christmas <laughs> so indeed um yes yeah, so we're really happy we're big fans of resolutions <laughs> here um now i want to be really clear I, I do you know i have no problem with a, a resolution where it's kind of you know something that you feel really kind of passionate about but this is where intentions to me are much more powerful because intentions aren't about what you're going to do intentions around how you're going to feel okay so that can move from any point of the year <coughs> please excuse me so it can be done at you know at any point across any project but it's a really um great thing to start thinking about so rather than thinking i'll give an example rather than thinking resolution might be i'll get up every morning and go to the gym at six o'clock because you know I'm lazy and need to be up and everything. A, a great intention would be, you know, my intention this year is to make sure that I appreciate my body more. Yeah. And that could be whether you need to stay in bed occasionally or whether you need to get up and do that gym class. So that way you don't feel beaten up by yeah. it. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, having you, hearing you explain it has been really interesting actually because it brought back to mind for me when we've been away like on retreats together and we've set intentions. So yes. The one, the one, almost like the one kind of like ritual, which I know you're going to come on to is um you know this one particular retreat where we would we would kind of like get there you know a day of traveling flying or whatever get there you know dump the stuff in the room walk down to the lake yeah. which i used to think was a river but it's not it's a lake so walk down to the lake and kind of set our intentions for for that week you know what did we want to kind of like experience absolutely who do you want to be when we're leaving so i guess it's kind of it's like that. really yeah. similar to that and that's why i say you know that the way that we'll talk through this you can use it um in any kind of you know way of life um, and I really love doing it exactly right on you know kind of on on the retreats or something that's special because yeah. actually um, what you often find is that the intention normally comes true but normally in unexpected ways mm -hmm. and I think resolutions can be really rigid so you know as Cheryl says if you haven't been to the gym three times out of five you fail so you know where's the where's the selection box I don't know why I think any of them are surviving into new year but you know where's that selection box or you know there's no point I'm off the wagon so we'll just go down yeah. intentions are all about actually you know what kind of um future are you trying to create mm. for yourself um so one of the things that we've been talking about um is almost like a word for the year so this is becoming more and more popular and any of you who are kind of on um, Instagram or, or kind of following some people will see that actually kind of picking a word mm, for the year one word. Ha yeah. has become a really big um, theme yeah, um, it has. And, and kind of just, just something that, that that has become quite trendy at the moment. Now I'd like to point out that I was doing it years before it was trendy, if you don't mind, um, but it can be a really powerful thing to do. And what we thought we'd do is perhaps share some of our thoughts on what some of our intentions are yeah. um for, for this next year not all of them because a little bit like listening to other people's dreams other people's intentions can be amazingly boring but we hope that it kind of triggers mm. some of your thoughts up um so one of the the ways that we were talking about it earlier my word one of my words for last year was around consolidation um and i've gone through a huge amount of change in a couple of years prior um my mother had passed away i got divorced i'd changed jobs i'd moved house so this year was all around really getting into my new house, settling into my new job, you know, really just getting to a level of, of 
peace and quiet mm -hmm. and and consolidation sounds like a really boring word for the year but actually that's exactly what what it did it was yeah. about building foundations again yeah. and almost kind of going back to to basics did you have a word for last year i i did have a word yeah because so um so some of you will know when i'm kind of in my interim space with my finance hat on um i do some work around finance transformation for big organizations um and one of the things i started saying actually quite early last year probably around sort of january time was that 2019 was going to be my year of personal transformation. As so opposed to just doing it for yeah, someone else. Yeah, so transformation, which has been, you know, a word that has been in my career now for a good six, seven years. I decided that that was going to be my word, but it was going to be for my life, you know, so moving mm. into this different space of, you know, writing a book and kind of all of those other things and running the retreats and yes. stuff. So, yeah, that was my word for, for 2019. And, and so it yeah. feels, I imagine, has it shown up in ways that you didn't expect it to? It, it has, and, and definitely when you say about like setting the intention, and obviously I've been doing other stuff to mm. kind of get me there, so you know, working with a coach and all kinds of things, but once you set the intention, you do start to move towards it, you know, that's mm. the thing, and even if it's every step isn't perfect or scripted, but you do start to move towards what it is that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, which I think is much more powerful than just lists of things that you need to do. So, so <coughs> please forgive me. If you think about it, the kind of the opposite way around. If Shell had done this as resolutions, she might have gone, resolution one, write a book. Yeah. Well, that looks terrifying. There's no emotion or joy That's behind that. Way. Oh, great. Resolution two, start a retreat business. Yeah. Resolution three, begin a podcast <laughs> with one of your friends. <laughs> yeah. It's got nothing around it, whereas actually going from just that word of... Yeah transformation and if you can see if you come and have a look at um the, the filming of this her face lit up when she says the word because it really meant something to her yeah. still means something to her it means that so many things have been able to evolve that you weren't feeling rigid about were you exactly and then you know some of those other things then hang off it but it's like the transformation is kind of like the, the root almost mm. you know and then the other things the other you know achievements the book and those things that are kind of just the branches and leaves that come off it but really you're your kind of core is the transformation, yeah. that's the word, you know, it's the one word. Absolutely, and this is the interesting thing, that, you know, the, the word for Cheryl being transformation, the word for me being almost like consolidation, you'd think it wouldn't lead us to the same mm, end, you'd think it wouldn't lead yeah. us to, you know, this fabulous, um, exciting kind of, you know, project we're doing together, but actually, the consolidation for me enabled me to actually build a great bedrock through which I can now think about doing different things, yeah. um, you know, and, and that that difference is something that I find really powerful um, and we wanted to share with you. So if I share with you my words for next year, and people have asked me recently, how do you come up with them? Um, and actually it's words that just pop into my head, to be honest with you, or through conversations I have with Cheryl or my other friends or kind of some of my mentors or coaches. Um, and if you're just really struggling to get one yourself, do please come onto our website or link in with us on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And we this is the type of stuff that we love. So yeah. we can have this conversation with you. Um, you know, please do come ask us out for a coffee or mm -hmm. something. Um, I appreciate it is Christmas, but we'll all be off the wine in January. So, you know, if you need any help, this kind of intention setting is really useful. So one of the words that I'm going for this year um, is simplification. So really something around um, bedding down what, what's kind of important in my life. And now I've consolidated and I've got my kind of home what is it that is the real core of, of what I want in my life and that, that simple way of doing mm. things. Um, the other word that, that really keeps coming into my mind, um, and it came from you actually, via um, a really wonderful lady called Reb Veal. So um, it's kind of open-hearted, open-hearted, mm. you know, kind of rather than open-minded. So I've worked for a long time in a, in a business of which relies on my intellect. Mm. And there's something around this next year that I really want to open up into um, supporting other people. Hence one of the reasons why we're doing this work, being bringing all of that really kind of soft energy rather than this is what you will do, you know, bringing that kind of discussion point. Yeah. Um, and those are my two words, which you can see when I'm talking about them, my face kind of mm. lights up. You can even hear how my voice changes. So, mm. you know, that's why... You know, as you'll have heard in the previous episode, I'm cutting down my drinking, well, I'm cutting off my drinking, I'm going to be cutting off my spending, because I want to get down to yeah. that simplicity, um, but at the same time open-hearted because I want to mm. share it with other people and I want to learn Absolutely. more about how to, yeah. to live. And open-hearted, I mean, 
What an amazing word she Yeah, she it says. is. But I mean, I would say that you're you're kind of already very much in that space, like 100%. Oh, thank you. I think that, I, I definitely think that, I guess from a, because I obviously haven't worked with you, you know, many years ago, but I think, I guess in a professional um, space, you often have to be more in the mm. in the head space rather than the heart space. But um, certainly having worked with you more closely over this last, kind of like six months or so on the retreat stuff and seeing you as a retreat leader, I think you're all heart. Like I genuinely oh, think you. that you are, you know, your 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 heart, you kind of draw people in and kind of and very much kind of show them who you are. Oh thank yeah. you. Well they're fantastic guys. I've already done one of them. <laughs> See if you can beat that. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to pick another one. But this is the amazing yeah. thing about intention words. You can change them at any point because yeah. they're yours. Yeah. So, Cheryl, what are your kind of words for this year or word? What are I, you haven't, I haven't set any yet. So this will be interesting Ooh. because I, I'll probably do that maybe over like the next few weeks. There's, there are definitely some themes that I'm thinking about. Mm. So one of the things that's obviously come up for me in the last few weeks is slowing down. So yeah. there's something about stillness, you know, just being still. So maybe, you know, that mm. may be one of... Um, my words because it's probably one of my biggest challenges yeah. is just sitting still you know and kind being, of just being, being just being present I, I am definitely you know a human doing rather than a human being so um so stillness probably you know something about that will will have to play a part I think because I, I do want to I want to enjoy the journey yes. you know we're, we're going on like an amazing journey and sometimes I do feel and obviously I was told recently that I'm kind of just going at 100 miles an hour and missing everything that's going on so that that is something that I would really like to kind of manifest well it was really interesting wasn't it at one point um we we, we ran a um a, a kind of ex, ex um a vision space together recently um and Cheryl and I and, and if you come and meet us you'll see we've got very different very complementary styles actually mm -hmm. um it's really lovely to me that we kind of really connect on a very deep level we are very different when yeah. you meet us yeah um although interestingly we can both appear um the opposite to what we are so it's really it's a fascinating do, do, do come and meet us we'd love to love for you to to be puzzled by it as well um but one of the things that was really interesting is that you know Cheryl kind of said to me oh sometimes you know I feel that I'm quite measured these days um you know I feel almost that she feels almost that like I go slower than she did almost come back pull her back now she meant that in a complimentary way that I need yeah. that stillness and what I was thinking was, oh my God, it's because actually I'm not living from the open heartedness that allows me to get excited about things again. So actually maybe joy is one that I would add into mine mm -hmm. that would kind of, you know, just lift it a little bit. And yeah. that kind of curiosity and excitement and, and exploration maybe, yeah. um, you know, around actually what you can do. So it doesn't just have to be still as in, it's still the entire, <laughs> the entire year, but it can be around depth maybe. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So this is the kind of conversation we can have if you guys want it, if anybody mm. wants to get in touch and have a talk around it. And what it can do is set the tone for the for the kind of whole year and, and the work that you're working on. There's some fantastic tools out there that you can do this with. You know, I, I'm not going to pretend that we mm. are the first people to think about it. Yeah. But it is something that I much prefer to a list of resolutions. Yeah. It's a really good place to start because I think then even if you do then come up with specific goals or objectives that you want it's all kind of grounded in okay. something I mean the whole one one word thing I mean I hadn't really seen much of this stuff on Instagram but mm -hmm. um, I know that there is a book that's out there and I can't remember the name of the author but I believe I believe it's called one word and it's about yes, it businesses is. that have been built on one word and just um, you know his, his theory is kind of like about the importance of it and how um, you know how much more successful um, these businesses are because they have such clarity of purpose because it's not lost in like a complicated mm. mission statement or whatever, and haven't we like worked on so many oh of those? It's so But yeah, if you can come up with one word that does it, that seems to be so much easier and clearer to then be able to move forward. So that's what this is about. Yeah, and, and also there's something fascinating to me um, around. I do a lot of work with people, obviously, who want to change jobs, and let's not lose track of the, the fact that this podcast exists to really help you find joy in the job you're doing, and as we said at the beginning find the work you're really meant to do. It's that, that journey of self-exploration. But I often get to points where people tell me that their New Year's resolution is to find a new job. And I have a saying that always says it's never about the job. It's never about the job. It's always about something else. Um, and I was doing some work with someone recently and we were talking about why they wanted a job. And actually, um, they wanted a promotion. And they wanted a promotion because they wanted the recognition. So if you drill down, um, and they wanted the recognition because they didn't feel particularly proud of the work they did without that recognition. And they wanted to be told that they were good at what they were doing. 
And this actually opened up a much wider and deeper conversation. Obviously, I'm not reaching confidentiality here, but went into kind of feelings of self-worth. Mm -hmm. And what this person really wanted was to feel good enough and yeah. to feel validated. Validated. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely right? validated. Um, and so what we spent a lot of time doing was talking about, well, what other areas of your life? You know, you exist as a human being mm -hmm. outside of your workplace. What other areas of your life do you feel really valued? And actually, this was reflected in perhaps their family they didn't feel mm -hmm. quite connected with. Um, and this is why I would encourage all of you, you know, do... Do go and have a look again at our whole life system that you know we've got, which is where we run all of our coaching and we run all of our retreats, um, because everything interlinks with each other, doesn't it? And I think often we think you know we have one goal, but it turns out actually it encompasses a much wider yeah. intentional desire we Absolutely. have. Absolutely, yeah. We're just kind of scratching the surface no. often when we set those those goals, and often actually, as you say, once you then rethink it through and really go to the root of what it is that's going on you potentially come out with a completely different goal. Together. Well, you know what, and there's something so fascinating, isn't there, around that horrific resolution that shows up for so many of us, lose weight, mm. why? Yeah. And, you know, there's a big difference between lose weight to feel healthier in my body and move my fantastic body mm. easier versus to be thinner, you know, yeah. because then I'll feel better about myself. Yeah. And this is what I mean. You guys will know when it's a really positive intention. Yeah. And if not, please do contact us. And this is, as you can hear, this is the type of work that I love, so I'm really mm. happy to help yeah. you identify it. So before we kind of finish off, because we do like a bit of action, um, let's talk about how you set them. Um, and what you've got here is two very different podcast hosts with two very different kind of approaches to this. So we're going to talk about Cheryl's approach first, because it's less woo-woo. Um, <laughs> so the way that I kind of talked about this was um, Cheryl's approach kind of intention setting or what to do with those intentions mm. afterwards. Very much around plan, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, I do. I do love a plan. I'm not going to lie. And actually, in some cases, your intention comes out of the plan that you create. It does. I would say, actually, the, so the word that I had for last year, transformation, I think... I mean, I, I did a lot of work last year, though, around clarity and purpose, and, and then the the word kind of, like, started to come out of that, and it all started to emerge, but I, I do live a plan, yeah, I like to, when I've got, like, a few ideas bubbling around, I like to kind of, like, prioritise them, um, and, you know, by sort of thinking through, well, what is it that am I try, trying to achieve, and why, and then what makes sense in terms of the order of, like, how I do things, so I do go through a little prioritization exercise yeah. I hate to say it but I almost do like a little four box matrix you know of um of you know what's the impact going to be what's the effort which should I do first etc yeah. so there's a little bit of that um and then that that helps me to kind of prioritize and then set some plans um you know around what I'll do when and how I'll approach and it how do you then down. monitor that or go kind of track it um I mean I try to sort of stick to my planners I am a little bit of a um I'm a little bit of a magpie when it comes to planners so I do sometimes I might have a planner that I'll use for 90 days and kind of stick with that and then I might go to do like some whiteboard stuff on the wall or whatever but um I'm always kind of keeping my goals like front and center whatever those big goals are and then assuming that they've been broken down properly mm. so I break each goal down into like say the five steps what are the five steps that I'm going to need to take to kind of achieve that? So, for example, if it's the book, yeah. you know, what are the five steps? So the steps are, you know, write the book, <laughs> <laughs> write the book and finish the book, um, you know, get the book edited, find out about how to market the book, um, you know, and then there are probably two other ones. Do you know what I mean? So break it down into like those five steps and then you can then plan those in from a time scale and you can set yourself some time scales around, okay, so that number, that number one in terms of writing the book, how long yeah. is that going to take? So that's the kind of approach I tend to take, quite scientific, I guess, to be honest. And even though, even if I don't stick to it and hit every deadline, at least I've kind of got a framework that I'm sort of loosely working yeah, on. Yeah, and, and you do love a framework. And one of the things that we will start to talk about more as we go into next year is actually the amazing journey that we're going on, learning to work with each other more closely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we were doing some planning earlier today, and I'm all about coloured papers and pens, and Cheryl's <laughs> looking panicked, and, you know, yeah. and I'm like, look at these ideas that I've yeah. got here. And she's thinking, oh, my God, you actually did some work. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking, well, Where's the spreadsheet? Put it in a spreadsheet. Exactly. And then I looked into her <laughs> eyes and I said, my dear friend, you'd love me to put this on a spreadsheet, wouldn't you? She just looked at me and I said, now I know you like the content, I'm happy to put it in whatever form it, it takes. Yeah. But it's interesting because I really need the, let's have the discussion around it, yeah. look at my coloured pens and my, uh, my writing and look at how I draw yeah. stuff. Yeah. Cheryl really needs the, it, that's agreed, it's now yeah. in, a, in a plan yeah. of how does that map yeah. out to, to what we're going to offer you guys as our our yeah, clients exactly. for next year so there's a really interesting difference I think yeah. in terms of how yeah. we work in that way yeah. um, and that's really clear when it comes yeah. to how I set intentions yeah. 
So, um, and I love this. Yeah, so I'm possibly the least planned person in the world, which is odd because everything always seems to happen fine. Do you like a calendar? I think you plan unintentionally, if that makes mm, sense. Maybe I accidentally. The plan is there, but maybe it's because you're so clear about your intentions. Yeah, yeah maybe. The plans then come through. So maybe it's the know. opposite way around. And I think, you know, you guys will know which one of these um, resonate with you. And again, this is why we say do come in and meet both of us, because one of us will really resonate, and then normally the other one is the most helpful. <laughs> it's normally yeah. what happens. Um, but yeah, so I don't do plans. I do rituals. Um, and I kind of set my intentions with rituals and I, I do, there's loads and loads on um, the internet that you can do in, in various different ways. Um, but one of the ones that I really like to do is, is speak it out loud. So Cheryl kind of mentioned there at the beginning of our um, retreat that we went and you, it was an old almost conversation for mm -hmm. us, wasn't it? Because I said, right, let's go down to the, the lake and set our intentions. Yeah. And you kind of looked at me like, I like to write <laughs> these in my book and muse on them and think yeah. about it and it'll come out. Um, and instead, we just sat kind of facing away from each other yeah. and said, right, you know, my intention is, and we, we put it out there. It was so lovely. Um, yeah. You know, we put it out there. So interestingly, that same retreat when I went um, last time, and actually Cheryl didn't come with me, we had a ritual at the end of the retreat that all of us jumped into that lake because that's the feeling yeah. of that was an end of retreat yeah. ritual. Um, so how I tend to set my intentions um, for me, and as I said, you guys can do this any way you want because a ritual is a ritual because it means something to you. What I tend to do is write out the words that I want to focus on for the coming year and really feel them. So, you know, you could feel how my voice changed when I talked about mm. them and that's how you know they're the ones. Really feel them and kind of meditate a little bit on them for a little while. I normally light a candle. I normally then kind of, you know, roll them up individually and... Um, burn them if I'm honest with you and kind of send them out into the, the into universe. the ether into the universe um and say so a great amount of gratitude for it another thing that I do do and I do this every new year's eve um and have done for the last five years which is why my life has changed beyond all recognition for both good and bad um is I write a letter to myself the following year so um I will write a letter this year um to myself as it were but from next year if you see so I'll be writing this is what's happening and you know you're standing at the beginning of 2020 and I'm at the end of it um, and these the way that you've manifested your intentions yeah. of you know simplicity open heartedness joy um, that's perfect so it's a letter from the future letter from the future that's now great. what is unbelievable about it um, and it certainly happened to me this year is the letter that you write <laughs> normally turns out to be only a fraction of what you can imagine Right. So last year, my letter focused around the house that I was trying to buy at the time. And I said, yeah. you'll be in this amazing house in Warwick, and this is what happened. Um, that house sale fell through in April, and I was really ratty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. really ratty. As it turned out, the house that I ended up in is 500 times better and is perfect in ways that I didn't know could happen. And it's closer to me. And it's closer to you. So and it's, so everything works out as it's meant to. So actually, when I write, read that letter again on New Year's Eve, I'll be laughing to myself, saying, I have funny that you thought you could preempt that. You knew, you have no idea what's coming. Um, so we'll put up a couple of ideas as well around how to, to do this. And, you know, as we've said before, one of our, our big push points here is this is your kind of development, your way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something for everybody here. There's the real kind of planned, logical approach yeah. that... That, that really breaks down goals is the kind of slightly more woo woo um, kind of visualization approach, which um, you know some of you will really like or mm. resonate with. Yeah. But either way, the intentions that you then go into the new year with enable you just to check in and make sure that you're creating your life intentionally yeah. rather than just getting caught yeah. on. Absolutely. There's yeah. nothing worse, is there, than standing at the end of the year and looking back and thinking, God, what have I achieved? Yeah. And you think, right, nothing. Now, if at the beginning of that year, what you've said is, this is a year of consolidation, a yeah. little bit like I did, actually, yeah. and this is a year of bedding in, and this is a year of calmness and settling down, mm -hmm. you look back on that year and you think, oh my God, I did all yeah. of that. Brilliant. Yeah. And how you can get what you want out of the next 12 months, which are a gift, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely love that. I have to do that this year. Great. So we'll be putting um, we'll, we'll be putting details out onto both our um, kind of Instagram and we'll put it onto, um, obviously, Reboot yeah. Global, um, which is where we've got all of our resources and mm -hmm. things. Again, do reach out to us. Yeah. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Exactly. If you want to do a spreadsheet... Don't come to me. Yeah, bring your pens to me, or you can do a proper plan yeah. with Cheryl. Yeah. Um, but you know, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear um, 
actually I'd be really keen to hear from some of you about the intentions you set this year Absolutely. and then to get you on next yeah, year be great. to see be great to share. how those yeah. move through um, because your stories are what makes this really yeah. interesting perfect okay and what perfect ending absolutely so um, happy new year guys happy new year well yeah. actually you know what yeah. not even happy new year because one of the joys of podcasts is that you can listen to them at any time well exactly so if you're listening to this yeah. in August happy new intention setting happy new intention setting exactly yeah. your yeah. your new, new life is about to begin with a different set of intentions so um, okay. hope you enjoy Perfect. whatever new beginnings you have in store um, and wishing you a wonderful new start. Perfect. And we will see you next time. We will. See you soon. We're ready. How to help you align. I can't read this. <laughs> it says, we're talking about setting intentions that, that help you align. 25 minutes. Can I just really say? I enjoyed that one. So, yeah, see, yeah, it was nice. nice. I'm <laughs> not